Hi guys, it's Miss Caitlin from the Bradley Public Library, and I am here tonight to read for Pajama Storytime. So, for my first book, I have, let me get flipped to the page. Curious George Goes Camping by Margaret and H.A. Ray. This is George. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. This weekend, George and his friend, the man with the yellow hat, had special plans. They were going camping. At the campsite, the man with the yellow hat unpacked their gear while George looked at all the tents. He saw tents for big families and one just the right size for a puppy. There were even tents on wheels. Would you like to help me put up our tent, George? The man asked. George was happy to help. It would not be hard to set up a tent, he thought, but it wasn't easy. George, why don't you fill our bucket with water at the pump? His friend suggested. We'll need it by our campfire later when we roast marshmallows. Mmm, marshmallows. George loved marshmallows. He couldn't wait to try them roasted. Now don't wander off and get into trouble, the man warned. But George did not hear him. He was already gone. At the pump, George worked the handle up and down. Soon his bucket was full. On the way back down the trail, he saw a family packing up. George watched a girl pour her bucket of water on a campfire. The fire sizzled out. George thought that looked like fun. He poured his bucket of water on the next campfire. Hey, yelled a camper. We weren't finished with that yet. The camper began to chase George, but George didn't mean to cause trouble. Now he only wanted to hide. He ran into the forest as fast as he could, but the camper's footsteps followed close behind. George ran faster and faster. The footsteps came closer and closer until suddenly they were passing George. Why, it was not the camper chasing George, no. It was a deer. What fun to run with a deer. Forgetting all about the camper and the marshmallows, George ran after the deer. But a little monkey cannot run as fast as a deer in the woods. Before long, George was lost and all alone. He felt tired and stopped to rest. At first he was worried. He was very far from camp, but there were lots of other animals to keep him company. He saw a lizard sunning on a rock. Where's the lizard? There he is. And a squirrel chattering in a tree. Then he saw the tail of a black and white kitty peeking out from under a bush. He was curious. Would the kitty like to play? George gently pulled the kitty out, but it was not a kitty. It was a skunk, and it was scared. The skunk lifted its tail and sprayed. Whew. The spray smelled awful. The animals tried to get away. George wanted to get away too, but he could not. The smell was all over him. How would he ever get rid of this awful smell, he wondered. Too bad he could not take a bath in the woods. Hmm. Then George had an idea. He could wash the smell off in the creek. George jumped into the cold water. He splashed and scrubbed, but he was still smelly, and now he was wet too. But what could he do? George thought and thought. If he climbed up a tree to dry off, would the smell blow away? No. Even dry and high up in the tree, George did not smell better. Poor George. He wished he hadn't wandered so far from camp. He wished he were roasting marshmallows with his friend. Suddenly, George heard footsteps heading toward him. Someone was coming. It was the forest animals, but they ran right by him. They had seen something scary, and George saw it too. It was a fire. George had gotten into the tr trouble for putting out one fire, but this fire wasn't in the campground. This was an emergency. Quickly, George climbed down the tree and grabbed his bucket. He scooped it full of water in the creek. Then, being careful not to spill, 
He climbed back up and swung from branch to branch through the trees. When George got close enough to the fire, he reached down and poured the water on the flames. Out went the fire with a big hiss. Just then, George's friend rushed out of the forest with a ranger. George, he called. I was afraid you would be here. It's a good thing you were here, George, the ranger said. We saw smoke from the campground, but you put this fire out just in time. George was glad to help, and the man with the yellow hat was glad to see that George was safe. But he had a funny look on his face. George, he asked, what is that smell? Back at the campsite, George's friend helped him get rid of the awful smell. After a strange bath in tomato juice, George smelled fine. Then the man with the yellow hat invited the ranger to cook dinner with them over their own small campfire. Fires can be nice, if you're careful, said the ranger. George agreed, especially for roasting marshmallows. It's a good thing George was there to help put out that fire. I don't know that I would have been brave enough. My next book is called I'm Not Scared. And it's written by Jonathan Allen. Baby Owl decided to take Owlie for a stroll in the moonlit woods. Nobody will bother us in the nighttime, he thought. Then up popped Badger. It's only me, said Badger. Don't be scared, Baby Owl. What are you doing out so late, she added. It's past your bedtime. I'm not scared, said Baby Owl. And it isn't past my bedtime. I'm an owl, and owls stay up all night. Then along tripped Bear. Oops, it's only me, said Bear. Don't be scared, baby owl. It's much too dark to be in the woods, he added. I'm not scared, said baby owl. I was taking Owlie for a walk, and I can see perfectly well in the dark. Then down came Bat. It's only me, said Bat. Don't be scared, baby owl. You shouldn't be out in the woods at night, she added. I am not scared, shouted baby owl. And I should be out in the woods at night. It's what owls do. Then along came Dad. It's only me said Dad. Don't be scared, Baby Owl. I'm not scared, said Baby Owl. Badger, Bear, and Bat keep saying I'm scared, but I'm not. It's Owly who's scared. Everyone keeps making him jump. We'd better give poor Owly a hug then, said Dad. Baby Owl yawned a big yawn. The sun's coming up, said Dad. It's time you and Allie were tucked up in bed. Dad set Baby Owl on his knee and read him his favorite story. Dad tucked Baby Owl into his warm, cozy bed. It's okay to be a little bit scared of the dark, whispered Dad. Dad means you, Allie, said Baby Owl. Good night, Allie. So I have a book of poems called Toasting Marshmallows, and I'm going to read a f couple of my favorite poems from it. Just need a second to find the pages that I've marked. The first one is called The Best Paths. The best paths are whispers in the grass, a bent twig, a token, a hint, 
easily missed. The best paths hide themselves until the right someone comes along. The best paths lead you to where you didn't know you wanted to go. I really like hiking through the woods. It's one of my favorite things to do. This one's called Two Voices in a Tent at Night. Shh, something is scratching our tent. Is not. Is too. Is not. Scratching. I don't hear anything. Something is scratching. Go to sleep. It's you. Stop it. No, it's not. It's a branch. It is you, isn't it? Okay, okay. It was me. Wait. Something's scratching. Listen. Told you so. Scratching. Shh. Are you doing that? No, no, no. Think it's the dog? I hope so. Have you ever gone camping in the woods? Sometimes it's kind of hard to fall asleep because you can hear all of the different sounds at night that you're not used to hearing. I have one more poem. I'm trying to find the page that I marked. Here it is. Speaking of sleeping outside, this one's called Sleeping Outside. Small me and a small tent staked to a huge planet rolling slowly through open space alone. Small me still wide awake under a wide starred sky almost almost feeling the earth turning. I have one more book for tonight. It's called The Salamander Room. It's written by Anne Mazur and illustrated by Steve Johnson. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me, Brian said. He took the salamander home. Where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top, and I will bring boulders that he can creep over. He will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends to play with him. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room. And every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders. And I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. The insects will multiply and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects and the bullfrogs will eat them too. Where will the birds and bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but they will not come. They will come back to my room when it is time for dinner, 
because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof, and the sun too, and vines will creep up the walls of my room, and ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. And you? Where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the stars, with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing. And next to me, on the boulder, with its head resting on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. I have one more poem that I want to share with you guys. This one is a little bit different. It's spoken and we're going to learn some signs with it. I'm going to go a little bit slow so that when you watch, you can try to learn the signs too. Okay, so it goes. Hush, hush, little fish. We are here to make a wish. We close our eyes and then we start to make a wish with all our hearts. That's all I have for tonight, guys. Good night, sweet dreams.